Well, let me pray as we begin. Our loving God, we thank you for bringing us here this afternoon. We thank you for one another. We thank you for joyous noises of voices, of conversation, um, of gospel partnership as we gather. And Father, we humbly pray that you would be uh, teaching us, uh, drawing our hearts towards you, lifting our eyes to heaven. Uh, Lord, that we would behold more of you, enjoy you, and grow in you. Lord, may we be an encouragement to each other. And Father, we pray uh, that we'll be a blessing. Lord, please bless our time. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, we're going to join in the psalm. Uh, you're doing it, aren't you, Steve? Sorry, I told Steve you're doing the slides, and then I forgot. This is a psalm of lament, or so we think, as it begins. Um, I earnestly seek you, I thirst for you. And then it begins to expound as the psalmist is reminded of all the good things that God has done for him, for them, for the people. So it's a song that turns into a song of confident expectation. And I've just chosen a few verses for us. I'm going to say the blue type if you'd like to join in the dark type. You, God, are my God. Earnestly I seek you. I thirst for you. My whole being longs for you. In a dry and parched land where there is no water. I have seen you in the sanctuary and beheld your power and your glory. Because your love is better than life, my lips will glorify you. I will praise you as long as I live, and in your name I will lift up my hands. I will be satisfied as with the richest of foods. With singing lips, my mouth will praise you. Well, we're going to use our mouths to confess our sins together. Wonderful to do it in the hearing of others. Uh, we have all fallen short of the glory of God. We've sinned. We've rebelled against the Lord. And so it's great to be uh, coming together to confess. So look at these words. We've not loved the Lord as we should have done. We've not loved one another as we should have done. And so we pray this prayer together. Most merciful Father, our Creator and Judge, we acknowledge and confess that we have sinned against you in thought and word and deed. We have not loved you with all our heart, and we have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We earnestly repent and are truly sorry for all our sins. For your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us and strengthen us to serve and obey you in lives wholly renewed by your Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And wonderfully, because of Jesus, we are forgiven our past present and future sins. So Lord God, have mercy upon us, pardon and deliver us from all our sins, and confirm and strengthen us in all goodness. Keep us in everlasting life just as you have promised, all because of Jesus. And we pray it and we thank you in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, focus a bit more on the cross now and for the rest of our time. And I'm going to hand over to Jeanette to lead us in our next section. Well, afternoon, everyone. It's great to see you all here. Now, children, I can hear you playing with the blocks. That's brilliant. I'm going to get my blocks ready. Uh, so you need to, if you've been doing something with them, you need to just have them as a pile in front of you. Okay, so we've got them as a pile. 
Brilliant. So listen out because we're going to be using them in just a minute or so. So on Thursday at Picnic Church, we learned about a man called Saul. Here he is on the screen. At the beginning of the Bible story, he was really proud because he kept all the rules. He was good at being good. And he thought, well, I'm so good. God is really pleased with me. I'm definitely on my way to heaven because I'm so good. I'm just so good. It was like he thought that the things he did and the way he lived his life were building blocks, see what I did there, building blocks to heaven. So children, get ready to build Saul's tower to God, to heaven with me. So get your first block ready. In the Bible passage that we're going to hear a little bit later, Saul says that he was Jewish, one of God's special people. So that's definitely a block on the way to God. So put that down. And not only that, but he was from the tribe of Benjamin, the really favoured tribe that was blessed by Moses. So let's add that to Saul's tower. He kept all the Jewish customs. He kept all the rules. He even persecuted the church, those people who were trusting in Jesus, the blasphemer. Saul was a really good bloke. Now that's a pretty good tower so far, isn't it? To God, to heaven. I wonder what we would add for ourselves. Get ready to keep going, children. My parents are Christians. I say my prayers every night. I've made it to the 4 p.m. service. I'm a kind person. I give money to the work for the church. Whoa. Whoa, we must be getting ourselves into God's good books and earning our way to heaven, mustn't we now? Well, that's what Saul thought until one day on the road to Damascus, he met Jesus, or rather Jesus met him, and his life totally changed. As we learnt at Picnic Church... Meeting Jesus changes our lives by turning our darkness into light. You see, Saul, or Paul as he was later known, suddenly saw that everything he was boasting about, everything he was counting on to get to heaven, was worth nothing at all. Knock down your towers. Knock down your towers. It's worth nothing at all. He realised that nothing he did could make him righteous, could make him right and accepted and friends with God. This could only happen through faith in Jesus. And Paul wanted other Christians to know the truth of this, so he wrote about it in his letter to the Philippians, and we're going to look at that a little bit later. But before we hear what he had to say to them and to us, we're going to sing a song now, so get your egg shakers ready. And some adults, you might find a little shaky something behind you. And I'm going to hand over to Dan. Wow, so you can see the words. Um, grace, uh, God's riches at Christ's expense, uh, that free gift of salvation from God. Um, and we're going to sing about that now. And um, they're the words of the first half. We're not going to show you the words of the second because um, they're easier to pick up. Of God, it is a gift of God, who is by faith. 
just been singing Ephesians 2 verse 8. We're now going to have another reading and Marion's going to come and read to us from Philippians chapter 3. Our reading this afternoon is from Philippians chapter 3, verses 1 to 11. Paul writes, Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. It's no trouble for me to write the same things to you again, and it is a safeguard for you. Watch out for those dogs, those evildoers, those mutilators of the flesh, for it is we who are the circumcision We who serve God by his spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh, though I myself have reasons for such confidence. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews in regard to the law, a Pharisee, as for zeal, persecuting the church, as for righteousness based on the law, faultless. But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them garbage, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith. I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining to the resurrection from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Wonderful. Thank you, Marion, and happy birthday. We'll try not to sing happy birthday at the end, but you never know. I just can't help myself sometimes. Well, uh, if you can 
Well, we won't, if you might have a Bible with you, um, do look at Philippians chapter 3, but I'm going to be looking also at Isaiah, 50, Isaiah 53. Um, but let me pray as we um, dwell on these verses again. Our loving God, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that you've loved us uh, in Christ all the way to the cross. Uh, we thank you that we can gather in Jesus' name and sit under his words. And we pray, Lord, in these brief moments, you'll uh, teach us again uh, your words that we'll be more confident in Jesus as you press these truths into our hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in our Bible reading, um, the Philippian church were being tempted to trust in more than Jesus for their salvation, as Jeanette was demonstrating. They were being told to build a tower of good things. And Paul knows just how dangerous this is. So he rubbishes any false confidence in ourselves or any good things that we might think we've done for God. I love the way that Marion said, garbage. <laughs> it's garbage, says Paul, or sewage, perhaps would be more accurate. Then his remedy is to lift their eyes to the crucified Saviour. So what is the remedy when we start to build our towers, Paul says, go back to the cross. Look to Jesus and what he's done for you. To trust in our own achievements will be to trample on what Jesus has done on the cross. He wants us to see that only by Jesus' blood are we made clean from our sin. It is only through Jesus and his cross that we are made right with God. And I found Jeanette's explanation so helpful. So he takes them to the righteousness of Christ. So he doesn't take them to the rightness of Paul or the rightness of a very religious person, but the rightness of of Christ, the perfect man, and what Jesus achieved at the cross. And to that end, as we're going to gather around the Lord's table soon and remember his death, I'm going to read some verses from Isaiah 53. Surely he took up our pain and bore our sufferings, yet we considered him punished by God. But he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed by our iniquities. The punishment that brought us peace was on him. And by his wounds, we are healed. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. Who do you think the writer is talking about in that passage? Maybe did any one of the younger people understand it? Who's this person who is pierced for us? Who took up our pain? What about someone who's a little bit older? Who do you think this is talking about? At the back, Zanna. Jesus. Well, I think so. That's right. But this was written 800 years before Jesus' death. And yet it could have been written at the foot of the cross. God sent Jesus, his son, to be his wisdom, to be despised and rejected by men. Jesus is what Isaiah calls 
the suffering servant. Isaiah was the one who wrote this down. He was a prophet, a messenger of God. And in verse 4, he says, Surely he took up our pain and our suffering, yet we considered him punished by God. Verse 5, it was for our iniquities, our sin, that Jesus the servant was crushed. The punishment that brought you and me peace was upon Jesus. So it was the Lord God who ultimately crushed, to use that word, crushed Jesus the servant, his own son. It was not because he deserved it, and the Hebrew is emphatic here, these sufferings were deliberately inflicted on the servant and it led to his death. And he didn't deserve it. He was innocent, led like a lamb to the slaughter, the innocent one. But the witnesses looking on understand it. They themselves deserve those sufferings. They deserve that death. But the servant takes their place. And that's the substitution that Israel had come to learn of in the sacrifice system, for sacrificial system in the old covenant. But now, through the suffering of this servant, the Son of God, they can know a permanent peace with God, the healing of their broken relationship with him. So look at verse 5. He was pierced, so the nails are dri driven into his hands for our sin, our transgression. The comfort they have received, the good news of their forgiveness, their pardon, has been given to them at a tremendous cost. Can you say those words on the screen for yourself? And Paul writes, But whatever were gains to me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. What is more, I consider everything a loss because of the surpassing worth of knowing Christ Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things, which he did, and consider them rubbish, garbage, that I may gain Christ. How can we boast in anything that we might have or anything that we might do or achieve for the Lord? when we have Jesus presented to us as a suffering servant, that I may gain Christ, I consider all of that rubbish. Nothing in my hand I bring, simply to your cross I cling. Jesus has done it all. Verse 3 of Philippians 3. For it is we who are the circumcision, we who serve God by his Spirit, who boast in Christ Jesus, and we who put no confidence in the flesh. I will not boast in anything, says the song. No gifts, no power, no wisdom, but I will boast in Jesus Christ, his cross and resurrection. What a wonderful saviour we have. Let's fix our eyes on Jesus and his death for us. Let me pray. Loving Father, we thank you for sending Jesus to lay down his life for me, for us, that we might know what it means to gain Christ, to gain salvation, the thing that we'd never deserved, and that we might now boast in him. 
Amen. So we've been looking at fixing our eyes on Jesus. But what about walking the way of the cross? We will be breaking bread and we will be picking up the words of our Bible reading that I want to know Christ and his sufferings and his death. We've already seen how Christ stooped so low to enter our dark world, taking on the form of a servant, dying a slave's death for us on the cross. The way of Christ is the way of suffering, is the way of death. So to enter into intimate union with Christ, as is our calling, as is our privilege, it involves the same experiences as Jesus experienced. Remember, Jesus is the man of sorrows, verse 3 of chapter 53 of Isaiah. Despised and rejected by men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief, from whom men hid their faces, he was despised. Well, one writer writes this, Alec Matea, when we dwell on this, we can be surprised when life brings us its trials. But what should we expect? Do we want to be made like Christ or not? Christ likeness leads to the cross. We must be ready for, and we cannot hope to avoid, the downward path of the crucified. And that was true for Paul, wasn't it? Writing from prison, probably on death row. And all who desire to follow Jesus must face, surely, godly, uh, for a godly life, a, a persecution. The servant must be like his master. So we don't be surprised when we suffer for his sake, when we share in his sufferings. And as we go out to this week, once again, we take up our cross, we follow Jesus, and we are prepared to suffer for his sake. And we do so gladly because we are confident we belong to him and confident that he belongs to us. And we count it as pure joy to have that privilege of following in his footsteps, sharing in his suffering, in his death, and ultimately his glory, his resurrection. So let's me pray again. Let's bow our heads. Because the sinless Saviour died, my sinful soul is counted free. For God the just is satisfied to look on him, on Jesus, and pardon me. Father, we thank you that you're, you have given us the Lord Jesus, that you've cleansed us from all our sin. And Father, we thank you for this privilege that we can take up our cross and follow your Son. Lord, please strengthen our step to do just that this week, that we may keep looking to Jesus and keep glorying in him, boasting in his name and being prepared to face anything for our crucified saviour. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So I'm going to invite the musicians to come and join me now. And I read one line from that wonderful hymn, but we're also going to sing this line. My name is written on the Saviour's hands. My name is hidden in Jesus' heart. I know that while Jesus stands in heaven, nothing can sh shove me out of the way. Nothing can move me. Um, I am safe in Jesus. So when the music starts, if you want to 
Um, join in a bit so you can stand or we can remain seated. We're going to listen to Naomi and Lynn lead us in Behold the Throne of God Above. Okay, children, if you've still got your blocks, it's not ideal, but can anyone see what shape I'm trying to make? What I really want is to go a little bit longer there and a little bit longer there. We can't trust, do you remember that block, the tower we made earlier? We can't trust in the good things that we do or the sort of person that we are to get us to heaven. But we can trust in, sorry, the cross. It's supposed to be the cross. We can trust in the cross, can't we? We can trust in the cross of Jesus. So maybe while I'm praying, because I know, children, you're brilliant at listening and doing something at the same time. So why don't you try and make a cross shape? out of your blocks while I pray. I'm going to use verses from our Bible reading today to guide our prayers. Further, my brothers and sisters, rejoice in the Lord. Dear Jesus, we rejoice in you. Knowing you is worth more than anything else in this whole world. Thank you so much that you died on the cross to make us right with God, to bring us into a relationship with the Father. And thank you that you rose again to bring us new, eternal life. We praise your name. Amen. Amen. Whatever were gains for me, I now consider loss for the sake of Christ. Dear Father, we are so sorry and repent of the times when we think and act as if we could do anything to contribute to our salvation. Please forgive us for when we boast about things in our lives that we think make you pleased with us. Help us to remember that there is nothing we can do 
to make you love us more. And please help us when we are consumed by guilt about our sin and so start to doubt our salvation. Remind us of the truth that there is nothing we can do that will make you love us less. Amen. I want to know Christ, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his sufferings. Dear loving Lord, we pray for our Christian brothers and sisters all over this world who are being persecuted, treated really badly because they believe and trust in Jesus. We pray that you will strengthen them and help them to be brave as they remember the promise of the resurrection. We also pray for those we know who are suffering in different ways. Loss of jobs, money worries, poor health, worrying about the virus and the lockdown ahead, feeling anxious and afraid. And this afternoon we particularly pray that you will be with the Clark family and with Peter and Zara, the other children and Monty. Please be with them and comfort them, reminding them of your promise to always be with them and help us to share with people who are struggling the joy of knowing Christ. Amen. Amen. And to finish, a verse from a couple of weeks ago. Shine among them like stars as you hold on to the word of life. Dear Father, thank you so much for the fun of Picnic Church last Thursday, where we learned that Jesus changes our darkness into light. Thank you for the light that Jesus has shone into our hearts and lives. Please help us to shine like stars as we share this light of the gospel with others. We pray especially for opportunities to do this over the Advent and Christmas season, even in this strange and difficult time. Please give wisdom and guidance to the staff team and others as they try to plan events and services amidst the uncertainty of the pandemic. We pray that we and the rest of our church family will consider ways in which we can help and use the gifts you have given us to serve each other and those who are still living in darkness. Amen. Well, we're going to uh, break bread together. Um, we're going to have the bread and not the wine. Um, and what we'll do is you'll remain in your seats and I'll come round to you and give you the bread. If you'd like to take the bread, can you obviously um, stand um, holding out your hands? Um, if you don't want to, just leave your hands to your side. And then um, consume the bread once I have moved away. But it's wonderful, isn't it, to break the loaf, to share in the loaf, to show that we uh, not only are partaking um, in the death of Christ, that we're saying, he did it for me, and we pledge ourselves to him. This is our gain, our eternal salvation, as we say thank you um, for him as we share the bread. And we're also showing that commonality together, our unity in Christ as we share the bread. And so we say, the Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation, in your love, you made us for yourself. 
When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. You embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ, you shared our life that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night that he was betrayed, at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of the supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit upon us that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these goodly gifts, make us one in Christ, our risen Lord. With your whole church throughout the world, we offer you a sacrifice of praise, lifting our voice to join the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. So we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. And so we pray the prayer of humble access. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. This is the body of our Lord Jesus Christ given for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen.
Let's say this prayer together. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and to work to your praise and glory. Amen and the Lord's Prayer together. 
Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Well, we've rejoiced in the Lord today uh, because of his uh, kindness to us and for the glory that um, he has shown us in Christ Jesus and for the glory he invites us to um, as his children. So we're going to finish by saying the Gloria together. We're going to stand for this. And um, it's our opportunity to praise him with our voices as we leave into this new week uh, to serve him, keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus and taking up our cross and following him. And so we say, Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer, for you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let me pray as we stand. Our loving Father, we thank you for our time together. We thank you that we have had opportunity in one another's company to rejoice in the Lord, to bless your name, and to receive from you. We thank you for the breaking of bread, uh, for your word proclaimed, and for the truths that you pressed into our hearts. Lord, go with us now into this week to love, uh, to serve you, to love and serve others and to live our lives in accordance to your truth, to the praise of Jesus' glory and grace. Lord, go with us, we pray, in Jesus' name and to his glory. Amen. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.